Manoj Bhatt, CFO of Tech Mahindra, joins us now. Manoj, before we get into specifics of Tech Mahindra, it's that time of the year when, along with holiday planning, uh, there is also a budget planning for uh, the coming calendar year. So, while we have a sense on holiday planning, that is going to continue. But what about budget planning in your assessment uh, by some of your large clients for 2020? Morning, Nikuj. Uh, I think uh, from a perspective of next year, uh, whatever conversations we are having with customers, I think it seems like that uh, the investments into digital will continue. Uh, I think we are seeing uh, that as a commitment to actually go ahead and spend. Uh, overall, I think, of course, given the overall scenario, I think people are a bit cautious, but uh, I do anticipate that uh, whatever we have seen as a trend uh, in this year in terms of uh, focus on modernizing as well as uh, trying to make best use of technology to deal with their business problems that's something which uh, i think will continue going into next year uh, obviously i think in terms of the detailed uh, view i think we will have a much, much better sense in a month or two but that's what it seems like as of now uh, going into the holiday season. One, uh, one important aspect which we need to address is your margins. You are confident that the coming year will be a better year for margins. Are you betting on higher utilization rates, higher productivity and cut in SGNA, which is internal? Or are you looking at the external environment to change where the deals which you're getting now will have better uh, pricing power? I think if, if we really look at margins, I think first let's understand why our margins have dipped a bit. Uh, I think one is, of course, uh, uh, in Q1, we have a seasonal element coming from our Conviva business, which I think equates itself over a period of time. Uh, the second is there were wage hikes, and they, they are obviously, we will recoup them over the course of the year. Uh, and the last element, which I'm going to talk about a bit more, is if I look at our deal wins, and we have had, uh, as you know, in quarter two, record deal wins in both communications as well as the enterprise segment. And that, uh, a part of these deals is about, you know, actually doing knowledge transfer, actually doing uh, transition, which is having an impact on margins in the coming quarters. And as we go into next year, we should see uh, that, that piece of it actually becoming positive as those kind of costs come down. The second is uh, uh, in terms of, uh, I wouldn't call it utilization, but I would call it use of uh, productivity tools, use of automation to increase the productivity uh, of how we deliver, how we move into a new age delivery model, which we are working on. And I think that's something which we, we continue to see more usage across customers and deeper usage in each customer. So both of them are happening. So that's another uh, significant margin lever which will play out. And the third is, of course, we have uh, synergies coming from our portfolio companies, which uh, I think we are seeing that trend developing and that will be very beneficial for margins going into next year. So that's the way we look at margins. So, so from that perspective, while this year might be muted, but I think as we go into next year, uh, all of these margin uplift uh, areas will come into play. And we are hoping that we will be able to realize uh, some of them, if not all of them. Hi, good morning. I know you spoke about the margin levers, etc., which are in place, but purely going by the kind of numbers of what you're delivering on margins, around 12.2% uh, in the last quarter, Vis-a-vis -vis what the, your peers like TCS, etc., which are nearly 25% are delivering, can you give us some sort of indication as to when you're likely to reach the late teens and what the timeline is in place for your margin growth? No, uh, we don't give any sort of a guidance in terms of where the margins will be. But to me, if I look at uh, EBIT margins, I think we... we, we we were at about 15% in FY19. 
and we want to see how do how quickly we can get back there over a period of time so i i don't have a specific uh, you know time frame or number for you but i think we are taking it one step at a time and we know the journey how how we need to approach it and the strategy is in place now it is all upon us to execute that strategy and make sure that we are realizing uh, some of the ideas uh, which we have uh, tried to implement and we are realizing the benefits of that in going into the coming years what about the currency tailwind the rupee has managed to aid uh, for all of the it companies across the board say we don't see the same low movement of the rupee depreciation vis-a-vis -vis the greenback what is the outlook on your overall margin picture and the kind of tailwind that you've seen from the currency so i think uh, really if if i look at this year the tailwind from currency has not been much because the rupee has while it's moved up and down on an average it's about at the same level uh, so to me i think uh, i mean historically this is how the rupee has behaved right so if i look at the long term average there's been about a 3 three odd percent long term depreciation and but the adjustments are always sudden so what we do uh, typically is from our perspective we follow a consistent hedge policy so we go up to 2 years uh, and at any given point uh, our hedges would be around 1.5 to 1.7 billion dollars uh, and that's uh, proved out to work very well across multiple up cycles and down cycles so to me uh, that's the way to think of it so when i when we think of margin levers and when when i think we design our uh, uh, future organization and future uh, methodologies i think the currency is a non issue i think that has to be managed very differently of course in the short term uh, 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 movement of currency is very beneficial if the currency depreciates and the other way around uh, if if the currency appreciates but our longer term levers and strategy around margins are Uh, ideally not currency dependent uh, and that's something so it's about productivity it's about new ways of delivering which is what we call uh, uh, nad uh, and it is about you know thinking about uh, more uh, efficient ways to meet our customers requirements and ours so that's that's kind of dealing from uh, currency is what i'm saying Are there certain legacy uh, businesses, Manoj, that you would perhaps look at exiting that continue to be a drag on margins? There's there's been an increased focus on digital. Uh, so would there be some legacy businesses that you would look to get out of? So I think if I look at, uh, uh, I mean, see, in every business, right? So in every year, there will be areas where you might have to think about. what changes to bring about and that's a continuous process so uh, and if you go back a few years I, i think we had alluded that we had done a full portfolio review so that's a continuous process uh, i think there's no one big area or one big uh, material thing which we want to exit it or uh, etc but it's a, it's something which we have to continuously look at our portfolio and say is this something which we are adding value to the customer at at a point or at a value point which the customer wants is this something which uh, is from a long term perspective something we want to continue but as i said it's it's nothing material it is it is part of our uh, monthly quarterly review process of trying to see what is the business we want to be in and what what do we want to uh, think about in terms of limiting so but that's that's more uh, continuous evaluation There are two things which have happened, which in a sense will dramatically change your ratios for FY21. One corporate tax cut that changes life for everybody. Second, tax on buyback. Tax on buyback was at play. Tech companies did return cash back to shareholders by using that, you know, arrow so to speak, which was in the quiver. How do you think effectively these two changes will impact the net outgo for cash and the way how you would be uh, reporting your uh, pre-tax profits? so nikuj from a perspective of uh, the the reduced tax rate i think we have done our evaluation uh, 
I don't, I mean, given that uh, where we are in terms of uh, the various uh, facilities we have in SEZs, etc., I think uh, from our perspective, there's no material difference between the new scheme and where we are. So, so that's something which we are evaluating. Does it make sense? So, but from a overall perspective, it's uh, not materially going to change for us uh, from a taxation perspective. Uh, I think from the tax on buyback, you're right. I think uh, uh, there were certain benefits uh, which overall uh, investors were getting uh, on the buyback route. The government has plugged that. Uh, in fact, uh, from our perspective, there is probably it looks like that uh, 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 in many cases the dividend might be better than a buyback. But that's something we are still evaluating because, as you know, our buyback ended in April or May. So we anyway can't think of a buyback for at least a year. So that's something we are evaluating, but that's what it seems like that with the new changes, uh, I think uh, uh, um, many of our investors have given feedback that they might prefer uh, dividend over buyback, but that's something we will have to look at further, but that's what it seems like right now. So. I don't want to get this one wrong. Uh, our idea is to reach and take the right message of a company to our viewers and to our shareholders. The case what you're making is that FY21 will be a better year than FY20 because there were a lot of seasonality and one-offs which had kicked in. But my whole pitch and my whole you know, uh, curiosity centered around the fact that you are a Mahindra company backed by a solid corporate group. But if I look at your technology business, it is not mm -hmm. the best. And I'm not getting into relative comparison here. Please pardon me. I'm comparing it with absolute players. What is making, what is stopping Tech Mahindra to become the best? What is stopping Tech Mahindra to take a giant leap forward and move to a different league where you break the barrier of teens' margins and you move into 20%? What is stopping Tech Mahindra from becoming the industry benchmark in terms of growth also? So, Nikunj, uh, I think fair questions, right? So, so from a perspective of, of uh, Tech Mahindra, right? So, if you look at our evolution journey, and uh, so obviously, one part is, uh, and I've said this before on multiple occasions, is that uh, because we are large, we have a large exposure to telecom. I think uh, it is a cyclical industry. So, depending on what time you look at uh, Tech Mahindra. Uh, so, for example, we are coming off a period of slowness in the telecom vertical. So, some of those metrics might look uh, uh, unfavorable towards us because obviously, uh, as you know, in every cycle, uh, uh, both revenues and margins come under pressure in a down cycle. The second way to think of it is that uh, from a perspective of, uh, uh, as you said, market leading, uh, I think uh, obviously in the communication sector, we are market leaders uh, out of India. Uh, Gartner recognizes this in the magic quadrant as a leader. So I think there are multiple positive things we do. We have a full service offering, and that's recognized globally uh, across the world. Now, on the margin perspective, I think, as I said, I think we have uh, a journey to cover. And uh, it is something which, as I alluded to it earlier, that's something which we are coming off a period and uh, where uh, it's been uh, uh, a lot of uh, customers, etc., have come back in the past uh, in terms of how how we can help them in terms of uh, their own operations and reducing the cost of that. And those those have brought down margins in the past. But as we look forward, I think the path is much clearer. Uh, I think so. Uh, clearly, uh, aspirations uh, are to do much better. And that's all what we are focused on uh, over a multi-year journey. And that's where I do anticipate that all of us are goal towards better revenue growth and better margins. And uh, we will try our level best to achieve them. You don't give a guidance. You've shared me with your ambition and vision statement. Tell me something more which I can, which could be called as a key takeaway for your shareholders and for my viewers. I understand ambition and desire is there to go to industry average. You will not give me any guidance. So how do we conclude today's interaction? So Nikuj, I think let me let me leave uh, the viewers with a few things, right? So if I look at uh, two or three points. Uh, so first is, as I said, uh, 
as we think about communication as a cycle, I think we are looking at cycles of 5G, etc. coming in the future. And that's something which uh, we have been preparing for for some time in terms of both organization, partnerships, etc., etc. So that's one element. The second element uh, is if I look at uh, from a perspective of uh, just what is happening in terms of some of the numbers we have reported, right? So as I indicated, uh, we are coming off a period of uh, uh, improving deal wins. In fact, last last quarter, as I said, was a record. And if I look at our funnels, I think they are also at a very decent levels. So there's a lot of activity happening in the market, and we are hoping that we win a fair share of it. So that's the second element. From a perspective of, of course, recognition, uh, we, we have been recognized not only from a a business perspective, but if I look at sustainability and so on and so forth, I think we are one of the few companies in the DJSI World Index from India, and we have been there consistently for about three to four years. So, so clearly, a lot of uh, effort is trying to build towards a sustainable company, and there are a few challenges, and that those challenges I've, I've articulated that we are working towards them, and uh, we will continue to improve on those parameters. So that's uh, that's the way I would. Uh, leave it, but uh, Nikun, happy to answer any further questions. All right, we let you go on that note. Appreciate you taking the time out, uh, Manoj, and giving us a sense as to what exactly uh, the outlook is for Tech Mahindra in terms of your overall deal wins, uh, your margin picture, and expansion plans. That's the view coming in from Manoj Bhatt, the CFO.